Hi friends, this is Debbie from Dior Design and Decor. And today I would like to work on a charcuterie board. This is a really fun project to do. And I buy the 18 inch, we also have 15 inch we work on, but it's an 18 inch charcuterie and it's one inch thick. So it's a beautiful piece. Now, the first thing that I like to do is prime the surface because as you can see, most woods have knots in them. They have imperfections and sometimes I even sand them if, if needed, but this is a beautiful piece. And um, I'm gonna show you how I create a beautiful charcuterie board. Seeing that Mother's Day is coming up, actually can use it for any holiday. But Mother's Day is coming up and this is a beautiful gift for mom. Sometimes we can put the turntable underneath and make it like a Lazy Susan, or we can add handles. I'm gonna show you how to do all of that today. So the first thing I wanna do is show you how to prime. I use Wise Owl. This is a perfect primer. It comes in clear, which is nice to use if you'd like to sand back and see um, the wood come through. But today I'm using the white. It also comes in light gray and dark gray. So it all depends on the colors that you're going to be putting on top. Now, since we're putting decoupage on top, we want the surface underneath to be white so we see all of the colors coming through perfectly. So let me get started. I like to go with the grain. It, it's just something that I like to do and I think that it also gives you a much better coverage when you follow the grain of the wood. I hope everybody's having a great day today. It's always a great day when I'm painting. It's my happy place, as I call it. I'm hoping that by seeing this done and learning how to do it, you'll be able to do these at home. You can get the wood at Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, any of those stores have them. You can also do smaller ones or thinner ones if you don't need a very thick one. I just like the one inch. It gives a really nice solid feel. And you know, many times people will actually just display them on a counter, put them on a, a little, uh, what do you call that? A little rack that you would put a, a photo on, a little stand, and it's really pretty in a kitchen, especially if it is decorated in the decor to coordinate with your kitchen. So this is Wise Owl Primer. It goes on so smooth, absolutely beautiful. And the thing you don't want to forget is to catch all the sides. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing. But this primer is beautiful. It's a stain blocking primer. It also helps the paint to grip on better. And the other thing too, especially if you're doing furniture or some home decor, you actually will notice that it'll take less coats of paint afterwards, especially white. White paint sometimes does need a, a couple of extra coats. All depends on what it's going over. Now, the important thing here that you notice I'm going over, I like to make sure that there's no dripping and um, places where the primer can collect. So you always wanna make sure you're checking your edges. It's a nice big board, it almost feels like I'm holding a pizza pie, which I love pizza. Pretty much everybody does, right? I also do pizza boards Speaking of pizza, those are really fun. I'll do those one day with you too. Just a little bit more to do here. And of course, being that it's a primer, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get on there. All right, I'm just gonna take my heat tool. Might be a little noisy for a second. 
but you want to make sure that your primer is completely dry before you begin to add the paint. Working on a dry surface is always best. Now usually I let this dry naturally, but because due to time today, we wanna to make sure we get it nice and dry. Sometimes, depending on how much there is in the wood, I will do two coats of primer. But today I'm just going to do one. Again, this is Wise Owl Stain Eliminating Primer in white. I love all the colors that we have because they work well with whatever color you're putting over it. Okay, so for time's sake, I actually primed the other side already and we should be good to go because I'm always covered in paint. It's a good idea to have baby wipes next to you, but I'm a messy painter as you can tell. I think most of us are messy painters. And of course, primer doesn't come off as, as easily as paint does. So it's a good testament to the gripping factor of our primer. Okay, so there you go. Perfect. Now, I'm going to use a white paint today because, drop that in the water. My background on my paper is white. Now, if it had a little bit of a beige tone to it, I would go with a paint that matches the background. I just like the way it looks. It gives you a nice cohesive look. And when you've got beige background with a white edging, it doesn't look as good. So I always go with whatever color the background is. All right, so I'm using Snow Owl. See if you can see that. It's called Wise Owl. It's our whitest white. And I always take my paints and I put them into the Fico bottles because it makes it easier for me to use it. And it also doesn't contaminate the paint in the container every time I dip in. So that's what we do. All right, so hang on one second. I need to get I'm going to actually use a foam brush so you can see how you don't really need to have all the fancy brushes. You can use one of the foam brushes when working on these. I always have lots of foam brushes. You can get these at any craft store. They're very inexpensive to use. And actually, I just wash them right out because everything here is water-based. So it makes it really easy. All right, so you'll notice how I don't start on the edge because if I started on the edge, it would drip over and I'd have a bigger mess. So I start a little bit in and then I drag it out to the edge. There we go. Wise Owl has so many colors and we have several different whites. Some of them have a little bit of a, a yellow tone background and some of them have a little bit of a gray tone, but pretty much we have whites for every occasion. And you're just putting it on, smoothing it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be covered completely with the decoupage paper. And the biggest thing is that you just want to make sure you cover it all the way. You'll notice how easy these sponges are. Really easy to use. And I teach a lot of children's classes 
and I use these all the time. They're just a lot easier for the children to manipulate as well. And believe it or not, my little ones do lots of decoupage. They make some beautiful gifts for their moms and they've actually made some really cool presents for their dads for Father's Day. We have lots of transfers that we can put on. We have so many fun things and the kids just have a ball. Kids love creating. And I think that, you know, when I have my adult classes, they all become kids again because all of a sudden they're just playing. You know, how many of us loved coloring with our little ones when they were growing up? I think that we were having just as much fun as they were coloring. It just brings you back to your childhood and all the fun things that you did when you were little. All right, now again, don't forget to catch the sides. Very important to catch the sides. I'm going to probably lift this up again. I have this little Lazy Susan that I work with when I'm in the studio, so it just makes it easy. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just applying the white. And of course, white going over white, it isn't so easy to see, especially with my old eyes. But we just wanna make sure we cover it because we can always cover it again later. We can always do some more touching up if we find that we missed a spot. There are no mistakes in painting. No mistakes. Sometimes it's uh, a mistake that you think is a mistake ends up being something that looks fabulous and, and it works. Which is a lot of fun for the little kids because they never worry about a mistake. They just keep on painting. And again, we're just covering one coat right now. And I think that's about all that we have. That's all we need. All right, we got that covered. Let's keep that up again. Wait till you see the transformation. It's just going to be so pretty. There are so many options for decoupage paper. I use recycled decoupage. There are everything from pretty flowers and pretty birds to grunge. We have lots of fun grunge. Um, oh, I'm telling you, there's hundreds of papers and I have them all. I have several of them because it never fails when my women come to class, which we've got a class tonight, sometimes they all want the same paper. I mean, that rarely happens, but it has happened. So I have to make sure I have enough here for everybody to be happy. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Again, I usually let this dry on its own, but today we're doing it quick so you can see the whole process. I'm gonna move this out of the way because I know I will spill it. All right, so let's take a look at this paper. This is called Spring, and I actually sold one of these finished last night, this exact one, so I thought I'd make another one for the studio. I packaged them so that you can get them home without getting them messed, but this is the whole version of spring. Let me hold it up for you to see. This is 20 by 30, so it's pretty significant. 
takes up the whole screen. So the next thing that you want to do here is to decide what part of this paper do you want to see on your charcuterie board? Do you want the birds mostly to be on? With some flowers at the bottom? Or do you want to move it so that this bird is completely on the paper and you get more flowers? So it's just a matter of figuring out what you think would be the best. I think I'm gonna do it right there. All right, so you can cut off the majority of the excess paper just so it's not in your way while you're working, which is what I'm gonna do. And I usually tell my women to be sure that they have a half an inch of extra paper because we'll be able to sand that right off later to a perfectly straight edge. But you wanna make sure you don't cut off too much. It's much easier to have extra on your board than it is to run out and have an empty space. And then we have to start fixing things. And we can do it, we can do it. All right, we're almost done. Okay, I save everything because when I do the kid classes, they get to use all of the extra pieces for little, little projects. All right, so there we have it. That's going to be a boy. Now, many people use Mod Podge, and I'm gonna show you I do have some here. And Mod Podge, it's pretty easy uh, for you at home to be able to use. It's almost like an Elmer's glue watered down, okay? It um, has more working time. In other words, you have more time to smooth out wrinkles. Um, it's just easier to work with. What I use when I do my own, I use the Wise Owl One Hour Enamel in Satin. Okay, I just like working with Wise Owl and um, it's what I do. I love it. Now, let me just get this up. I also put it in a FICO bottle. It's just easy for me, but today I'm gonna use it straight out of the can because there's only a little bit left in here, so I don't have to worry about contaminating anything. All right, so here we go. When you're applying your Mod Podge or your One Hour Enamel, it's the sealer actually, but I'm gonna use it to seal this down. You wanna do it in very small sections so you have time to spread it out and make sure there are no wrinkles. Stand up. Again, I start in the center so it doesn't roll down the sides. I don't want my paper sticking to the sides. I only want it to be on top. So I'm just taking it to the edge. I also want to make sure that I have enough on there so it sticks and I want to make sure I catch my edges. Now if I happen to miss an edge, it's not the end of the world. All I have to do is go back and fix it. Add a little more and drop it down. Okay, I think we're good. Now, I always put my hand in a baggie because as I lay it down and I put my hands on it, I don't want to rip the paper. So slowly, I'm going to show you. Go down the center and out to the edge a bit. Down the center, out to the edge. Very gently. Anytime paper gets wet, it will wrinkle. It's just the reality. Wet paper wrinkles up. So with the plastic, I'm able to work on it without having the paper rip. Now, it happens in the beginning. Anytime you do something for the first time, you're gonna have something happen. So 
Just remember, you can smooth it back out, add a little more Mod Podge or satin enamel and spread it out. The other thing that I use sometimes is a brayer. And you can get this again at Hobby Lobby or any of the craft shops, Michael's, wherever you like to shop. And this just helps a little more with pressing the edge. But again, you wanna keep the plastic between your brayer and your charcuterie board. All right. And let's see how that looks. All right, so I'm just gonna lift it up so you can see the paper. Checking my edges, looks good. All right, so you'll see part that's stuck down. And we are going to continue on our way. I'll turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. Pull your paper back as far as it'll go because what you don't want to happen is you put this on and you're missing a space. You will have a very long bubble of right across the board. So make sure that you get in as close as you can to where you just finished, all the way across. Make sure you get that corner because sometimes those don't stick, okay? So you've got it all the way across as close as you can get to the paper. spreading it to the edge again don't try not to let it go over it's not the end of the world nothing ever is we there's always ways to fix things we can sand the paper off if it gets stuck we've done it we've done it many times just make sure it's as smooth as you can all right can you see the shiny part where I've got it done Okay, back to the plastic bag, and we're going to spread it again. Remember, go from the center out. And if you do get wrinkles, there's ways to fix that. We call it the iron-on method. So all you have to do is put parchment paper over it, put an iron on, just like you would iron your clothes, no steam, and you're going to apply the iron on the parchment paper over your decoupage paper. And lo and behold, it reactivates the glue that you put down and it allows it to stick better and it irons out all the wrinkles. All right, let's try the brayer now. Push down any spots that might have little wrinkles. This is really nice to catch the edges too. And you will notice as it dries that the majority of any wrinkling dries up and just flattens right out. go. Okay, Ooh, one spot there. All right. There we go. Again, we're going to pull it back and do another section. Again, start in the middle so you don't get puddles on the end. Bring it close to your paper. There we go. Bring it right in. If you 
you just go to the edge. Most of the time you don't get drips. That's when you pull the brush over the edge and that you'll get a big drip down the side. And don't be afraid to pull the paper back a teeny bit just to make sure you've got the edge. Here we go. All right. Baggy time. I'm gonna do it this way so you can see it a little better. So easy. Try to spread that out. Very gentle when the paper is wet. Always be gentle. Catch the edges. These become such beautiful gifts. And you know, when you give a gift that you've created yourself, not only is it unique, it's not something that anybody can buy in the store, but you made it, you know, and it makes you just feel so good that you've made something for someone from your heart. Really special. I always love getting those special personalized gifts. How's it looking? So far, so good. Patience is what happens here. You've got to have patience because if you don't have patience and you rush something, that's when we get those rips. All right, we're doing pretty good here. I'll show it to you so far. This is the part that's not on yet. And this is all put down. All right, moving on. You know, people would say, well, how many charcuterie boards do you need in your home anyway? Well, it would be so fun to have a charcuterie board for every season, I think. Imagine doing a patriotic one for the holidays. You know, for those of you that entertain a lot and love to have your table all beautiful with the season, it's not a bad idea to have a patriotic one and then you've got the summer versions with the watermelons and beachy themes. It's just so fun. All right, here we go. Time to lay it down. Again, I start at the center and I work my way out. Trying not to get too many wrinkles. I always say though, you know, nothing's perfect in this world in terms of, you know, human. I mean, if I had this made in a factory, yeah, maybe it would be perfect because the factory can do that. But it just isn't quite as pretty. I mean, I sometimes I love a wrinkle or two. It gives texture to your piece. It doesn't bother me. Lord knows we all get wrinkles at some point, right? So not just the charcuterie boards, but we all get them. And what do they say about that? Uh, we've earned them. Yes, we have. And these little birds are just so pretty. No whips yet. Hopefully they will stay that way, right? All right. I do like the brayer. I think it does help to make sure that the paper is secured to the board. And it's not necessary, but 
I like it. Little birds are just tripping away outside. I can hear them. Such a beautiful day. I have the door open. All right, we're on the final stretch here. Let's see if I can get this last piece down. Make sure we got the edge. There we go. Very pretty for spring and summer. I think everybody's weather is improving right now. So add a little sunshine to our kitchens. I just got a wrinkle. All you do is lift it up, do it again. Slow but sure. We get there. Notice I work back and forth, side to side. Try to get right through that center until I reach the edge. Make sure that we Catch those edges. Sometimes I just pat it down too in certain sections. Let's get the brayer out. You can go any which way with the brayer. I do like to catch the edges though. And sometimes we have to add a little bit more to get them down. And we will check out that situation in a minute. See, I'm going to show you right here. There's a little section that didn't stick, if you can see right there. So we're just going to fix that real, real easy. I'm not going to put too, too much on because I'm so close to the edge. But we'll just put a little bit right there. Press it down. And that should have taken care of that. Then you just go around the edge and make sure that it's all done. There we go. All right, here it is so far. Now it's important to let it dry before you try to sand. I use sandpaper to get all the edges off and I'll show you how to do that. But it is important to dry it first. Let's see another little spot right here. Now you can use a hair dryer that you have at home. But if you're using a heat tool, just know that if you get too close to the paper, you'll burn it. If you get too close to paint, you'll burn it. So you just want to continually move it back and forth. It just helps it dry. Since I'm showing it to you all in one quick 
live. It is a lot quicker for me to dry it up well. Especially on the edges where I will be taking off the paper. All right, so you can use a sanding block, you can use a regular piece of sandpaper, whatever you want to use, but you definitely want to sand off the edges and make them nice and straight. So, here we go. Take your sanding block on an angle and you want to go straight down, not up and down, straight down. That's it. I'm trying to show you the best way. And you'll notice how it just comes right off. All right, see how perfect that edge is? Comes right off. Nice and easy. I think I'm gonna put it down here. It might be a little easier for you to see too. Now, if you had gone over the edge with your Mod Podge or your one-hour enamel, it would have stuck to the board on the side. So you'd have to take that off also with some sandpaper. And then you might have to touch up your paint, but it's not the end of the world. Oh, it's still a little bit wet right here. Notice when things are wet, they don't want to work well. Coming off nice and straight. Very easy. There we go. All the edges, if you can see up close, they're nice and straight. All right, last part. You want to seal the paper, all right? You never wanna leave it unsealed. You'll notice also, as you add the wet again, you're gonna see a few wrinkles. But guess what? It's going to dry exactly back the way you see it before we add the wet. All right, I'm going along the edges. I wanna make sure that they're down carefully. And then I will go back again later and I will actually seal the paint. The other thing that I do on most of my projects, I finish the back side. I never want anything to leave my studio unless it's finished completely. So I do paint the backs. And again, if you want, you can make it a Lazy Susan, like my working one here. I use this when I craft, it just makes it easy to get it around, get to all the edges and the sides and not miss anything. And you can do this with Mod Podge or whatever type of sealer you use.
I just happen to use Wise Owl. I love it. I have it here available in my store. And you can go online. My uh, website is DiorDesignsAndDecor.com. So feel free to jump online. The other thing that you'll see online will be a list of all the classes that we have. And you can just go through the months and pick out what you'd like. We also have children's classes and summer art camps. So much fun. There we go. Smooth it all out. Looks beautiful. So that's that. Charcuterie board done with Wise Owl paints and Roy Cycle decoupage. So it's great being with you today. Um, come back and see me again. I will be doing a lot of these and doing a lot of teaching. I want you to be able to learn the steps to take and to be able to do this at home. But feel free to come take class if you're local, all right? So it was great being with you all. Have a great day.